This is unit 9, lesson 5, and the try these. Let's look at problem number 1. In problem number 1, we're asked to evaluate each of the trig functions. Notice that the first three functions are in degrees, and the second three functions are in radian measurements. So I've cleared my calculator. I'm going to go to mode and make sure that I am in degrees. And now I'm simply going to type in cosine of 188. Cosine of 188. And we have an answer if I was going to round here. Again, I will always tell you what I want you to round to, um, but this is going to be approximately negative 0 0.99, negative 0 0.99. I had to go back and read the question. The second part of the question says to identify the reference angle. The reference angle is always what is going to be the degree measurement to go back to the horizontal axis, whether we go up or down. So I know that 180 degrees starting here is going to end at this point. So 188 is just slightly past that to go back to the horizontal axis would be a reference angle of 8 degrees. Okay, let's look at the next problem. So cosecant. Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine. Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal, sorry, Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine. So I want to take sine of this measurement. I'm already in degrees. So sine of negative 342.5. Now I want to take the reciprocal of this measurement. So 1 over, and I don't want to round. I don't want to do 0 0.007. I want to put this exact answer into this place. So to do that, I'm going to do second. And answer, which is the key below the 3. It will copy and paste that into place, and we can see we have an answer of approximately 3.325. So this begins with a negative value, so I know I'm going to go opposite. So here's going to be negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. All the way around would be 360, but we're slightly short of that, so somewhere around here. So I want to know how much more do I have to add to this to come up with negative 360? Well, let's just take 360 and subtract 342.5, and we can see we have a reference angle of 17.5. Your reference angles will always be positive values. Reference angles will always be positive values. Now, this one is a little tricky to remember because we don't use this type of notation very often. So I'm going to start by going tangent and 105. Now I want to make the degree measurement. Let's see if I can put it here so it's not as shiny on the screen as you're watching this back. So to get to degree, I want to be able to show angle. So this is the angle. It's written in blue. So second angle. There's degree. The next measurement is 12 hours. Now to represent this as hours, I'm going to go back to angle. It's number two. And then we have 45, not 15, excuse me, we have 45 minutes. Okay, so how do I represent those minutes? It'd be common for us to think we're going to go here and we would see two marks. It's not there. Where we will find it is down below here at the plus sign, but it is in green. So let me put this back here. So I'm going to go alpha plus sign. Okay, and here is our measurement. I'm going to write it down. All right, so now I need to identify what is the reference angle. Well, let's just identify where it's about 105. So it's a positive number. I'm going to go counterclockwise. And so I'm going to go starting here. Here's 90. It's just a little bit past 90. The reference angle is the closest distance back to this horizontal axis. So I want to know what is this distance to get to 180. Now, I need to be able to put this into decimal form. So I'm going to type in 1, just like I did before, without tangent in front, 105, hitting second angle, and then it's 12 hours, second angle, and then 45 minutes, alpha plus sign. This is going to put it into decimal form. I need to know what do I need to add to this to come up with exactly 180. Or I can take 180, subtract this exact value, so I'm going to do second paste, which is second answer, and this is my answer. So 74.7875. This would be the degree measurement to get back to the horizontal axis, also known as a reference angle. Now we're going to switch to radian measurements. So I'm going to come up here, go to mode, and I'm going to switch to radian measurements. Okay, cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of tangent. So I'm going to do the tangent of this value, the tangent of 17 pi divided by 10. And now I want to take the reciprocal of this. I'm so sorry, it's glaring there for you. 
one divided by this exact amount gives us the reciprocal or the cotangent. And now we, ha we can see we have an answer of approximately uh, negative 0.726 or 727, depending on how you choose to round it. Okay, now we want to figure out what is going to be the reference angle for this. Well, I'm going to choose just to quickly convert this into degrees. I believe that for me, that's probably the easiest way. So let's take 17 pi over 10. Converting it in degrees means I'm going to multiply it by 180 over pi. In the past, a lot of students will ask me, like, how do I know if I'm going to multiply it by 180 over pi or pi over 180? So uh, when it's not degrees, in this case, so it's not degrees, I'm going to make sure that the radian measurement is on the bottom. They are going to reduce on to 1. A lot of students think it's the same as, as canceling out. Kind of, you can think of that in your mind. I'm taking 17 times 180 getting the answer and dividing it by 10. So this is equivalent to 306 degrees. Well, let's see, where is 306 degrees? So it's positive 90, 180, 270. So this would be 300, so it's right about here. So what do I need to add to 306 to come up with 360? Well, 360, subtract the previous answer, gives me a reference angle of 54 degrees. Now, it's very possible because this original answer was in radians that they want you to express this in radians. So 54 times, okay, it's in degrees. So I'm going to put degrees on the bottom. I'm going to take 54 divided by 180, do math, fraction, enter, enter, and we end up with 3 pi over 10. This is the reference angle in degrees and in radian measurements. Okay, and we are able to achieve an answer over here. All right, let's keep moving here. So now I'm gonna go on to the sine, the sine of 3.5. Again, a good common question is, is that degrees or radians? If you don't see a degree symbol, it is radians. We're already in the mode of radians, so I'm just gonna type in sine of 3.5, and I get a negative, approximately a negative, 0.35, so approximately negative 0.35. Okay, well, what is 3.5 as, what is 3.5 as a, um, where do I should say, where does it fall in the unit circle? So again, this is going to be pi, which is 3.14, it's just a little bit more than that. So I want to take 3.5, and if I subtract, so I want to go back to pi, if I subtract pi, this is the decimal measurement. This is the decimal measurement for they, and so I'm going to write that down. This is the decimal measurement. So 0 0.3584. Now that's the radian measurement for, for the um, radian measurement for the reference angle. And again, if they're giving us in degrees, they're going to want a reference angle in degrees. If they're giving in radi radian measurements, they're probably going to want a reference angle in radian measurements. Okay. Give me one more second. To my apologies, just helping the children here. Okay, so secant is reciprocal. Can't start with an S. So it's going to start with the C of cosine. I'm going to take the cosine of this measurement. Okay, so the cosine of negative 5 pi divided by 8. And now I'll take the reciprocal of this exact same value to end up with the secant. So the secant is approximately negative. 2.613. All right, now let's find a reference angle for this. A reference angle. Okay, so a reference angle for this. I always think it's easier to turn it into degrees quickly. That's just my preference. So if I do negative 5 pi over 8 times 180 over pi, Okay, I can take negative 5 times 180 divided by 8. I end up with a negative 112.5. Where would I find that? Well, here's negative 90. Negative 112 is just slightly past that. So I want to go all the way back up to this because this is the closest distance rather than going backwards to get back to the horizontal axis. And that's at 180. So my question is if I take 180 and I subtract 112.5, I get an answer of 67.5. So in terms of degrees, the reference angle is 67.5, but we were provided an initial value in radians. Let's turn this into radians. So an equivalent measurement would be, 
I'm going to take 67.5, which is up there, and I'm going to divide it by 180, and then hit math fraction, enter, enter, and we have a reference angle of 3 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8. Let's take a look at this word problem. The second hand on the clock is 5 inches long. It provides us time within 1 minute, and then the height of the second hand how high is, the, so that's the output or the y value, how high is the second hand after 50 seconds? So it gives us an x value, it wants to know the corresponding y. We ask the same thing for part, part b and c. So how high is it after? We want to keep the exact same unit. So I'm going to turn into seconds because that's what I'm, I'm giving up above, that t is within seconds. So 1 minute is 60 seconds and 60 and 50 gives you a total of 110 110 seconds would be part B, would be the input. We'll figure out the output. Part C is after 30 seconds. Okay, so let's go back to our calculator. Our input time is going to always be in terms of our X, and then our Y is the output in this case. So let's come back here, and let's look at the calculator. And to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and I plugged it all in. Okay, so the next is that we are going to see what does this turn into. So I'm going to hit stat, calculate, go all the way down to our sign and press enter all the way through. Now, if we went back, remember, I just read the inputs were going to be, if I remember, 50, 110, and 30. And seconds, seconds is going to be our input. So I need to go to at least one th or at least 110. And I've done that. I've even actually gone past that. I wouldn't have to have negatives here. So here we go. We can graph it. And now let's figure this out. So part A was the how high is it? And it is going to be second trace value. And we're going to type, oops, sorry, second. Oh, let's go back to graph. Graph. Oh, you know what? I forgot to plug in. I forgot to what I didn't do here. I'm sorry. I was thinking, why am I not seeing a graph? So I went through here and I'm rambling. We come up with this. Now I need to copy and paste that into the Y. So if I go to Y, I can copy and paste that by, let me move this down so you can hear, see this, hitting bars, going down to stats going across to EQ and then pressing enter and it copies and pastes that in. Now let's go up and graph this. Okay. So now we can see this continuous curve and now we can do second trace value. And the question is how high is the second hand after 50 seconds? So I'm going to type in 50 because this is in terms of seconds um, for the input and we get 7.5. So part A is 7.5. Second trace value. I'm not going to type in 1.5 like I've seen students do in past years. Um, converting that all into minutes because that's what T represents is, oh, sorry, converting it all into seconds because that's what T represents would be one minute and additional 50 seconds or writing in 110. We also get another 7.5. That's how high it is. Um, and 7.5. And then let's do the last one. Let's do 30 seconds. Let's go down to 30 seconds, and it is at zero. It is at zero at 30 seconds.